Meet Laurel J. Ritchie, president of the Women's National Basketball Association. Successful, optimistic, and charismatic, we spoke exclusively with Laurel to find out why she's the boss. Laurel, I am super excited to be sitting down with you. But before we dive into <laughs> what it's like this. to spend a day in your shoes <laughs> first, we have to know what shoes you are working in. Shoe game check. Tell me about these shoes that you work in. So these are my work shoes. These are air soles. So okay. as I said earlier, it's, I'm very nervous about admitting these are air soles, but they are the most comfortable shoes I've ever owned. Now you recently joined the WNBA this past spring. But talk about how you were able to get to this point in your career. Yeah, well, I'll talk a little bit about how I got to the W because it, it's one of my favorite stories. I was working at the Girl Scouts and uh, I was giving a keynote address at their fundraising luncheon in Seattle. And unbeknownst to me in the audience were the owners of the Seattle Storm, uh, an all-female uh, ownership team with a president who was also a female and we just really connected. They said they were in the process of building a dynasty with this team and I thought those are the kind of women I want to be around and I just love um, the notion of women supporting other women. So how has it been for you thus far being the president? I'm loving it. I absolutely do. I'm, um, I find it challenging. I find it rewarding. I think it's important work and um, one of the first things I did um, after becoming president was go around the country and meet with the fans of the WNBA, um, the staff of the WNBA teams and the owners, and um, they're just incredibly talented people working in this league and the 132 players, I don't have any kids and I really feel like I now have 132 <laughs> daughters who are really fit well-educated. They also are committed to giving back to their communities and they understand the significance of what they're doing. So it's been, that has been just um, beyond my wildest dreams. Also coming into this position, you are the first African-American president of the organization. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to you to come in as the first? It was a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I am humbled by it. I'm really proud of it. Um, and I think the best part of it has been um, just how proud my dad is. My dad's 87 years old and he's always been proud of me, but he's particularly proud of me with this. And so, you know, to be able to give that gift to him after he's done so much for me, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. How important is it for you to empower other females? It is important to me and I, again, that's not something um, when I first started working that I set out to do, but I can remember the moment that it became important to me. I was um, working at an advertising agency, Leo Burnett in Chicago, and um, one of their training um, opportunities was if you had done a good job, you were allowed to go to these very senior level meetings. And I was thrilled uh, because I was one of two out of my class who was chosen to go to this meeting. So I got all in my suit and I was, you know, ready to sort of sit and absorb all of this. And I walked into the largest conference room I had ever seen in my entire life with more windows than I'd ever seen in any office building and the room was entirely filled with white men. Um, and I just thought, this is not reflecting the world in which I live, so what can I do personally and what can I do uh, to help others to sort of change the complexion of this particular boardroom? So from then on, I've always sort of enjoyed mentoring and enjoyed working on products and services that are geared toward women and. Um, really thinking about how can I use marketing to help young girls feel better about themselves and feel like anything is possible. So I really do like that. And on that note, how will you leave your mark on the WNBA? You know, that, that remains to be seen, but I hope that uh, when my tenure is done, people say uh, this was a league that was doing well before she came and sort of took off once she joined. Um, I just really want to take it to the next level and um, really solidify the position that the WNBA holds in um, sports and also in broader society. That's great. 
you, of course, have this dream job. So many people are watching. Particularly my brother. His first <laughs> comment to me was, how the heck did you get a job in basketball? Uh, exactly. I've been playing basketball every Sunday morning from 6 to 9 o'clock. That's my job. I, you know, so. And here you are sitting in a seat that so many others would love to sit in. Tell me, how can we grow up to be Miss Laurel Ritchie? You know, I don't think you should try to grow up to be Laurel Ritchie. I think you should grow up to be whoever you are. I, I really believe that if you do what you love and do what makes you happy uh, and actually don't try to follow the crowd and don't try to be somebody else but to find the wherewithal to be yourself, uh, you'll be sitting in chairs that are bigger than this one. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. My pleasure. And thank you for watching this episode of She's the Boss. You can catch other episodes at MadamNoir.com. In the meantime, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Madame Noir.